Hey, middle school a &R parents. Um, it's come to my attention that a lot of you are brand new to skiing. Um, and skiing can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of gear to take into account. I figured it would just be easier to create a series of videos for you guys so that you can see what I have done to kind of get my systems dialed in for myself and for my family. Um, everybody does a difference. Just take it for what it's worth, right? But this should be helpful. So it's gonna be a series of videos. This is all totally unscripted. Don't count the number of times I say um, or if I make a mistake, that's just the way we do it, right? Um, we're gonna start this first video by talking about classic skis. We're gonna start by just talking about ski the skis to get. So really quickly, in cross country Nordic skiing, there are two primary techniques that we do. We, we will do a classic ski, which is a diagonal stride, right? So this is what we would see. This is the classic old school style of skiing, right? And then there is skate skiing, where we're actually skating. That's a hilarious technique I'm giving you right there. Uh, it's more of a hockey, ice skating type motion, okay? So we have two different techniques of skiing. It's like saying in swimming, you have the breast stroke and the back stroke. Both are swimming and both techniques will support each other. Like if you're a good and proficient backstroker, you're gonna be able to pick up some things that will help you become front, a strong front stroker as well. But it's different motions, different body mechanics, and you need different gear for them. Hope that clarifies, because I know that that can hang up a lot of pokes. So we're gonna start with talking about classic skis. These are my classic skis. They are a, a relic at this point, but this is what happens when you're a ski coach. You don't buy gear for yourself. <laughs> Rule of thumb for getting classic skis for your kiddos. If you're in a position where you can't find brand new skis and you can't get professionally fit by someone at AMH, maybe you're passing your skis down from an older sibling, um, or you've just walked into sports authority or played against sports, um, Here's the rule of thumb for finding a pretty decent pair of classic skis for your kid. Take their height in centimeters. If they're a beginner's classic skier, take their height in centimeters and add 10 centimeters to it. That's gonna be the size of the classic ski that they need for a beginner. If they are like intermediate to advanced, take their height in centimeters and add 10 to 20 centimeters to that amount. And that'll be the height that you can for that, for that ski. You'll be able to find, every ski is marked in a different place, but you will be able to find, like for example, my skis are 203s, uh, right here on the bottom. Another old school hack, is have your kids stand there and put their hand up. Does it touch the top? That's probably an average general good length for them. We could get a lot more technical about this, you guys, because also we need to take into account weight and it, it, like advanced abilities, but we're not doing that here. This is like foundational one-on-one stuff, right? So beginner, you add 10 centimeters, intermediate advanced, add 10 to 20, or just hand there, put their hand up. Um, the base of the classic ski, this is important you guys, because there are really, if you walked into play it against sports right now, you would see two different types of classic skis. You would see, Do what you gotta do. I've seen people use shelves, those um, bracket hooks for shelves. You can even do um, uh, pegs and just hang them um, long ways. So if you walked into Play It Again Sports right now, you would see a classic ski that has this rough bumpy texture. This, this is called fish scales. These are fun skis for playing in the backyard. They're gonna be slow, slow for your kiddo. If you get them these skis and they plan to race for middle school, they're gonna be so frustrated because it won't matter how much effort they put into it, they're gonna be slow. If they're a beginner skier, these skis tend to be a little more stable. They may find, feel a little better on it, but for the most part, we wanna, we wanna stay away from these guys. These are awesome play skis. If you find a cheap pair of them, grab them because you can use them as what we call rock skis. Meaning if we're skiing on grass or if we're skiing in areas where we know there are rocks and we don't wanna take our fancy wax race skis and scratch them up, we'll pull out the rock skis. But for the most part, this guy with the fish scales on the bottom is not the type of classic ski you're gonna want. Why? Well, let me show you the kind that you do want. I just threw my skis all over the place, you guys. I'm a mess. 
So this classic ski is a very flat, clean base, right? What ends up happening is we need to create traction on the bottom of this ski and we will use kick wax, which is like a, a goopy, chewy substance that um, corresponds to the temperature and the moisture in the snow and will react with the snow in order to give you the proper kick. See how technical and a little confusing skiing can become, right? Can you imagine how many different types of kick waxes are out there? That's why you guys need to keep skiing with A&R because Jay Doris and Stan and all of those wax tech gurus will hook you guys up. You won't have to worry about all of this. They'll do it for you, but you at least have to give them the right tools. If you were to hand Jay this ski to wax, he'd say, huh? No, I don't think so. He wouldn't even wax it. You need this ski, this classic ski. Other thing to note is the bindings. Um, if you have skis that look like it has a kind of a bolt coming up through it, they're called a three pin binding. Uh, those skis are good decorations. Go make a fun bench out of them. You need skis that have an N and N binding or a universal binding where you flip it up and you can just put the toe of the boot right in there and close it and off you go. Okay, that's the classic ski. Um, again, if you are passing skis down to a sibling and you're not sure if you're, and say, let's say that you're passing skis down to a sibling and it's the right height, but say the sibling is a lot heavier, the younger sibling is a lot heavier, um, and you're wondering if the flex, the camber, see how it's bent right here, is not enough, here's how you test. This is not how the pros do it, this is how moms do it. You ready? Put the ski down on the kitchen floor. Have your child stand on the ski. So pretend that this is your child's foot. They stand on the ski. You're gonna take a piece of paper. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this and hold the camera. Um, you're gonna take a piece of paper, just a blank piece of paper. You're gonna slide it under their foot. This is really silly. This is what the pros do, you guys. You're gonna slide it under their foot, okay? You're gonna move it all the way out until you can't move it anymore. So let's say you can't move it about right there. Right here forward is where the base of the ski compresses to the snow with your child's weight. You're gonna mark that, just a little highlighter. You're gonna move it all the way back. Let's say that you get to here and you can't move it anymore because from here out to the tail of the ski, this, um, your child's weight is compressing the ski onto the ground. You're gonna mark that. So now you have your kick zone. Remember how I talked about the fancy kick wax that we put on our skis that's relative to the snow temperature and humidity? That is the zone that you will put your kick wax. Um, if you do this test on your kid and let's say they stand on the ski, your, your younger kid who's a little heavier, they stand on the ski and your paper goes here or your paper goes just right here. See, there's like no room. If this is their foot right here in the binding, they're not gonna have a kick zone. They're gonna, they're so heavy for that ski that they have compressed the entire ski down into the snow and there's not gonna be any room for them to be able to maneuver that ski to glide. Chances are, if that's the case, even if the ski is tall enough for them, they're gonna have a tough time skiing on it. It's an easy way to just test. If the paper test shows you that there is no room to slide that paper under that ski, you know, it's too soft. Classic skis, okay? Classic poles. Also notice that I have my poles hanging up right there with the skis, easy to grab. I know where everything is, my car is right there, and my kids' stuff is there too. They will literally grab their skis, throw it in the car. It's all right there. Okay, classic poles. Come to about, now I'm not in, I'm not standing on my ski right now, um, but if I were to stand on my ski, my poles would actually be about to my shoulder length, about to my shoulder. People are different with their preference around poles. Some people like their classic poles a little longer, um, but Good rule of thumb, classic pulls to the top of the shoulder.
Got it? Good. Classic ski boots. <laughs> and now I'm taking you over to my boot rack. There is all of our adventure boots. And I'm showing you guys this just so that you can see how I organize it for my family. It may not work at all for you this way. It's just, this is just another, you know, a platform for you guys to figure out what works and what doesn't. So there's all of our boots right there. Here are the classic, here are my classic ski boots. Um, are my kiddos, here's my skate ski boots. I wanna show you in conjunction with them. Classic ski boots fit more like a regular tennis shoe. Why? You need way more ankle flexion, that forward flexion and bend of the ankle. Classic ski boots, see how it literally just laces up like a regular tennis shoe. Now, the skate ski boots fit more like a high top. Remember high tops, do they still make those? I don't know, Air Jordans? So there's the skate ski. Why? Because remember, imagine on a hockey skate, you really need that firm ankle. Remember getting your hockey skates laced up super tight around the ankle so that you wouldn't wobble? That's the same concept with the skate ski boot. Do not get combi boots. Combi boots are marketed towards people who don't know what they're doing. Ah! Um, <laughs> combi boots, it's, it's an idea that you can do, you can wear the same boot in combination for both. Obviously, if it's a choice between that and nothing, get the combi boots, but know that your kid is not gonna have proper support for skate skiing in those combi boots. They can use the combi boots for classic skiing. They're not gonna have the proper support that they need for skate skiing though. So there's the difference between the classic and the skate. Again, most boots say it. Mine say classic on them. My skis say classic. Um, poles are not necessarily a difference between classic or skate poles. It's just the only thing that defines those two are the, uh, is the length. Um, okay, we're gonna pause there. So that just about covers classic skiing. Um, yeah, okay.